So, hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here. I know that it's uh, early afternoon, early to mid afternoon, and a lot of people at work in the office on their grind doing their things. Uh, I wanted to get this done earlier this morning, but I got a little backed up, so I decided to keep it on today's schedule. Uh, it's gonna be something that I'm going to try to do once a week, and that is address a particular issue uh, and talk about how you can overcome the issue. Uh, when, when, uh, when people come to me and they're saying, hey, look, this is what I want to do. Uh, I need help with getting here. Uh, and, you know, a lot of times you'll talk to these people and they, they'll have this unbelievable talent, all of these great ideas. Uh, they're just immensely creative. And the one thing I found out about creative people because I'm one is we come up with a lot of ideas, but we don't necessarily execute on the ideas. And I talked about that earlier today in a real short post that uh, mastery comes from the execution of ideas repetitively. It's it's not something you, well you know you got the people and they come up and man that's crazy that idea is off the chain, man why you know why aren't you a millionaire why haven't you put that you know in the market why don't you have a patent for it well. Ideas require execution to develop mastery, to develop expertise, to, de to develop the type of uh, intense passion and focus necessary for you to dominate in an area where you may be highly creative. You got a lot of people with talent. You got a lot of people with talent, a lot of people with a lot of great ideas, but no one really wants to execute. See, uh, we are procrastinators because it's easier to let something sit, to, to watch something not take place than it is to take the risk of investing yourself and risk uh, not succeeding initially, risk getting, you know, losing something, uh, maybe your money, maybe your time, maybe your heart or your emotions, your ego gets bruised, all of these things that keep us locked into this little place we call comfort, where we never get anything really done. We just kind of float around and think about and romanticize about how gifted we are and the level of genius we have, but we haven't put it to use. See, it's not the knowledge. It's not how, 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 how much of a genius you are, how gifted you are, all that's great. You got a bunch of geniuses that are living broke, a bunch of geniuses that have never experienced anything of any grand success. You know, they may be recognized by Mensa because of their IQ, if that's the type of genius they have, but you got genius. Everybody has a genius, first of all. Everybody has a genius, but you're wondering, okay, why aren't, why is it so few people succeed? Why is it less than 5% of the population on this planet excelling? I don't mean just succeeding at being average, succeeding at the status quo, succeeding at being good or okay in the area that everybody operates in. To me, that's not success. Success is when you know who you are and you have a clear idea and identity of what you want to accomplish in life. And it doesn't have to be anything anybody else thinks you should be accomplishing. It's your life, it's your passion, it's your purpose. But you have an idea and you're living in it. It doesn't matter where you are living in it at, you're living in it. And that's success to me. Success is the moment you start living your life, not existing in it, not just sitting up there and hanging out in it, surviving it. I'm talking about living it. From the moment you start, I don't care if you start in the gutter, you're, su you're successful. Because now you're operating in your purpose. You're operating in a climate in which you will start to experience fulfillment. That's where you experience success. But when you talk about uh, people not taking action, not executing on their ideas, we're talking about procrastination. Now you have a number of different reasons. But the first thing I do when someone comes to me and the primary issue is procrastination, I first have to explain the law of cause and effect. And what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do when I explain the laws of cause and effect is to uh, <laughs> my brother's on here bothering me. Uh, dude, really? You gonna show up and do me like that? That's all right. You a Virgo, that's all I gotta say. Anyway, little brothers, I swear, this dude has been doing this to me for decades. But anyway, uh, what you have to really do when you start talking about any type of issues, understand you have the law of cause and effect. 
What does that mean? The law of cause and effect says that for everything that you see or that you're realizing or experiencing, there's a cause, that nothing happens by coincidence. You're not where you are because life just happened. You're where you are because of decisions you've made, activities you've participated in, certain habits of behavior you've developed. So with that being said, you've got to really sit up and uh, get your focus and understand you're gonna work on the cause and not the effect. See, that's just like treating a sore throat for the symptoms, but not really dealing with what's causing the sore throat because that's still an underlying issue. And you may mask the symptoms, but you still have the issue or the condition or the disease or whatever it is to deal with. So that's the first thing we learned. So we're gonna go for the causes. So there are five things that I'm gonna cover real briefly that deal with procrastination and you know will help you move it's all about taking action it's all about executing it's all about sitting up and saying you know what it needs to be done i'm gonna get it done and there are certain things we're just not going to be naturally inclined to move on but we've got to understand if we don't move on these things we're not going to get the things out of life that we want so we've got to train ourselves condition ourselves on an emotional psychological and neurological uh, wavelength that, that we are going to take action. We have to train our brain, our body, our emotions. When something is sitting there and it, we get this inclination to back off of it, to move. And so the first thing that uh, I find that people tend to react to that creates procrastination is that the size of the task that they're looking to take on is so huge that it intimidates them. It's overwhelming. They're looking at it and they're going, man, if I can get this done, it'd be great. But how am I going to get this done? Uh, what happens then is that'll shut anybody down. But what you have to realize real simply and real quick, you don't climb a mountain by jumping from the base of the mountain to the peak. You climb a mountain slowly, steadily, one step at a time, placing your feet in the right place, getting the right footing, getting the right grip, and you climb. You climb. It's a step at a time. It's a slow ascension but it's how you get to the top. There's no quantum leaping to from the base to the peak. It's, you've got to climb it. And it's the same thing with anything you take on that's huge. Um, my brother, he's on here giving me a hard time. I don't even know if he's still on here, uh, but I'll definitely get him back. It's on, but, but, but uh, I'll definitely get it back. But he just finished a music project, his first solo project, uh, where, where, where it was all about him. And I watched him toil with this for years. But it was a huge project. He had to do the production. He had to do a lot of stuff, write the music, do the production, and then perform all the stuff. He did. And I watched him do that. Now, he could have stood up and said, man, I can't do all this. There's no way I'm going to ever get all this done. Yes, it took him some time. But the thing he didn't do was procrastinate. I wake up, you know, at times I was at his crib. I wake up 1 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning. He's in the studio. He's down there, he's putting things together, he's doing that, and that's how it has to be done. Uh, I've written, 20, written and published 20 books. Uh, you've probably heard me promoting uh, Critical Mass. I've written 20 books. Not one of those, 20 books, I can't tell you how many articles, thousands of articles, literally, for a number of different clients, plus myself and so many more uh, academic papers, whatever, and not, Anytime if I sit down with a writing project and look at it and say, okay, I got 50 pages, 100 pages, 400 pages, I got to bang out. When I sit down to write, it's, I've got to write this first sentence as perfectly as I possibly can. I'm not thinking about the sentence that follows it. I'm not thinking about what I'm going to write in the next paragraph. I want that first sentence to be excellent. And when I write that first sentence, it triggers the next, it triggers the next. And when I look up, I've written a chapter, but it doesn't start off with, I gotta write a chapter. It starts off with, I just want this sentence. And because I can see something that I can do, look, I can write a sentence in less than a minute. So I can sit down and that's where it starts. But it, you've got to find a way to break down those big, huge things into smaller increments that you can take on. You take that one small piece, of like bite off what you can chew. Write it off, go down, jump on it until you get it done. When you get it down and digested and complete, go back and write off another piece and go back to work. It's a piece at a time. You're never going to get to it if you're looking at the whole thing because it's not, not anything you can wrap your hands or your head around. So slow down. The next thing is you got too many tasks 
to take on at one time. Oh man, if if you're like me and you 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 about being busy about grinding, you have way more tasks on your to-do list than you have time in a day to get done. I never finish my to-do list. And you've got to learn how to do that or you're gonna drive yourself crazy. What I do is first and foremost, I get up and I choose three things. Three things that absolutely have to get done that day. Not the easiest things, not the quickest things. I'm not about how many checks I have on my to-do list. I'm about having the most impact. So what does that mean? That means that I'm probably going to take the things that take a little bit longer to do, but are going to have more gravity and weight in me getting closer to my ultimate goal. And what I find is when I do that, I actually drop a lot of the other uh, to-dos that are on the list that I haven't even gone after. They fall off because they fall under the umbrella of what I'm doing. So I take the big stuff, the most important stuff, I make sure that that's on my list. This is going to get done today. As a matter of fact, this video was one of them. That's why I said I left it on, even though I had some other things. I said, okay, this is going to get done. And so I had some things come up, I had to leave and go do some things, but I came back. And so here I am. Well, that's the first thing you do. Then you find a way to group things in way of category and priority. You deal with the things that have to get done, and then you prioritize on down and you get the most done you can. And you do that every day. Don't get overwhelmed by all these things on your list that you're not going to get done anyway. Find the top three things that absolutely have to be done. Get those done first. And then find out where you stand after that and work your way through it. And you do this each and every day. You will propel yourself closer and closer to your ultimate goal, to your destiny, to the outcome that you're looking for, getting the results you want. But it starts with you being able to sit down and take action. And if you're looking at this big, long list and you don't know where to start, you're just study saying, I don't feel like doing that. I don't feel like doing it. And you look up and you pretty much procrastinated through your entire day, got very little done, and now you're frustrated with yourself and you're, and you're uh, disappointed. But it's, it's all about, again, executing on your ideas. Another one is you run into, and this one is huge for me, you run into situations in which what you need to do is not interesting, it's boring, it's repetitive. Uh, it happens a lot with creative people. You know, like if it's something you really love to do, you know, it's it, it's doing it's artistic. If you're creative and it's artistic or it requires you to be uh, engaged lateral thinking uh, and all of that, you, you're good for it. If it's something that's organized and you've got to sit down and it's repetitive, and, and, and it, it, it's something you're looking at and you're going, I don't want to do this. When you really get yourself together, when you really push and you get where you really need to be, uh, you, when you really get there, then you can hire somebody to do those things you don't like to do. But when you're first getting started and you are the resource, there are, are no other resources, you don't really have the budget to go out and pay someone else to outsource the stuff you don't want to do, then you've got to find a way to make it interesting. The way that I make stuff that I don't like doing interesting is I make it challenging. I am by nature competitive. Uh, my brother on here bothering me, we are both that way. And that's why he's going back talking to me about basketball and all that. But uh, we, we're competitive. So what I do is I say, okay, this needs to be done. And I bet you I can do it in 30 minutes. And it's always going to be challenging. If I look at it, I say, man, it's probably going to take 40 minutes. I challenge myself to do it in 30 minutes. Now I'm, I'm, I'm working, against my uh, working, working against myself, but it's a challenge. I'm working against the clock. And if I beat the challenge, I reward myself. You know, I might say, man, if I get this done in 30 minutes, I'm going to take a break and I'm going to go to whatever. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go this. I'm going to go pick up baby and we're going to do this. I reward myself because I know if I didn't get that done, that was going to be a hiccup in the process of where I'm trying to go. So I got it done. did not like it, didn't like it, but I love the challenge. I got the challenge. And so I reward myself. Sometimes I, I win. Sometimes I don't come in under the clock, but I got it done. So that's what you do with that. Another one is I just, what no, uh, the other one, before I get to the last one, which is one I want to really get on, but before I get to the last one, the fourth one is you were working on something that's so important that the very relevance of it is intimidating. Let me give you an idea. You've got a business or you work for someone and they're giving you a project. And how you do on this project is going to determine how you move forward in this 
business or with this client. So if you if you screw it up, you'd have lost the client or you'd have lost the job. Now, that's intimidating. That's intimidating because your future is resting on how well you do. And if you don't calm down, if you don't bring yourself in, reel yourself in, calm yourself down and remind yourself of everything that you need to remind yourself of to regain confidence, you're going to make mistakes because you are, you're, you're not functioning from a place of calm to where you can reason, rationalize, check things out. So this is what I do. When I've got something where I'm trying to impress a new client, and I've got to lay out a proposal. I got to put something together. I put it together, then I call somebody that I trust to critique it, to look through it, to read it, to tell me what they see, what they get, what they feel, what they think I should do. Now, the risk of me, you know, uh, uh, incurring any real damage by showing it to them is zero. They're going to tell me what they think, help me make it better. So there's no risk. So what? I'm not on edge when I prepare it. I didn't prepare it for my client. I prepared it for the person who's going to review it. Now, once we have our little powwow, I see what I need to work on, what I need to change. Now I go back with confidence and I deliver what I need to deliver to my client and I get it done. I simply take the edge out of it so it's no longer scary. It's just what I do and I do well. It's just now it's somebody I'm doing it for that has a significant way of impacting my well-being and my lifestyle. So I look, get the lifestyle out of it. Get all the, look, am I doing what I normally do? Am I doing it well? Am I doing it uh, at a level that I can be satisfied with? Then I'll, I'll roll with the punches. I'll let the chips fall where they may. I just want to make sure I'm putting the best possible product for where I'm at right now on the table. So that's another way. Because, because if you allow the relevance of a particular project to overwhelm you, you will, by the very uh, force of fear, withdraw from it. You'll come up with every reason why you can't get started on it. You'll come up with every reason why you need a little bit extra time on a new deadline. You need to push the deadline back. Why? Because you are so afraid that you're going to fail. Failure is a part of the process. Failure is where you learn. Failure is where you get better. Failure is how you discover what not to do. It's a part of the process. Don't, don't be afraid to fail. Anybody that's telling you they've never failed is lying to you. Anybody that doesn't fail consistency isn't trying hard enough. If you're not experiencing failure on a regular basis, you plan it too damn safe. You got to push yourself out there. You got to be willing to go after it. You got to be willing to jump in a, a, a huge pond with some big sharks. If you ever want to swim with the big fish on a regular basis, it's that simple. Don't be afraid to fail. Finally, you just don't feel like doing it. Now, I'll be honest with you. Some people just don't feel like doing it because you're lazy. It requires work. It requires commitment. It requires you to get up and do something. But I'm not talking to people like that because that's a whole nother topic that requires an entire different approach. And that's a whole nother tools. I really don't really deal with lazy people because if I got to convince you to get up and go to work, that's some other things you need to deal with. I want to work with people who are applying themselves, but for whatever reason, not getting it, or they got a drive in them, but they don't know how. To. I want those type of people because they're going to give me the effort. They got the commitment. They're not, they, there's no quit in them. See, those are the people I like working with because I know if I can get them centered, we're going to get some results. But let's not look at the lazy person. What if you're not lazy? What if you're just having a bad day? I know I get tired. I'm drained. You know, I'm a husband. I'm a father. Uh, I run several businesses. I'm, 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 I'm speaking at places. I'm doing videos. I'm writing. I got clients that have me writing multiple articles a day. I have to stay busy because I have a, 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 a lot of responsibility. So I got all this stuff going on. And then here's this thing I've got to do because my ultimate vision is to take the Visionetics Institute to the next level. I want to be able to impact uh, a large number of people around the world. I want that to be my legacy, that I help people change their lives. And I'm doing it now, but I want to take it to the next. It's time to scale out. So I know there are things I got to do. But what happens when I'm tired? What happens when, you know, I'm just like dead? How do I get it done? 
this is what happens with me, and this is what I would suggest. When you got the moments where you're just drained, you're beat up, you're tired, you got two options. You can do what most people do, which is leading to procrastination, is you can reschedule it for a time you think you'll feel better. You know, I, I don't feel like doing it right now. So I'm going to schedule it for a time that I'll feel better. And what happens is when you schedule it for a time that feel better, you fall in that category with so many other people that do things when they feel like it. See, the people who get on in this world, the, the 4% that are extremely successful are the people who sit up and decide that I'm going to do the things that most people don't do. I'm going to answer the bell even when I don't feel like it. Matter of fact, when I deal with stuff I don't feel like dealing with, that's when I separate myself from the pack. It's the things that I don't want to do that I commit to doing that separates me from everybody else. And so that's what you've got to say, okay, I'm not going to reschedule. I am going to center myself. I'm going to focus. And the way that I bring myself into focus is I remind myself of my why. Anybody that's dealt with me before, they'll tell you, within the first five minutes of conversation, he's going to ask you, what is your outcome? Meaning, what is it that you're looking for? What is it you expect to accomplish by working with me? And the second question out of my mouth is why? Why are you doing it? Why am I asking why are you doing it? Because if the reason that you are doing it isn't big enough, you're going to quit. Because it's going to get hard. It's going to be difficult. It's going to get frustrating. You're going to experience delayed disappointment. People talking about you. You're going to have some setbacks and all that other stuff. And if you don't have a why that's so huge that it pulls you through those difficult moments, you're going to quit. So my second question is why? So when I sit down and I'm just drop dead, drained, and I'm saying, man, it's got to get done. What do I do? I sit down, I calm myself down, and I open up my mission statement. And in my mission statement and in my vision statement and on my vision board is my why. First of all, I've got to honor my responsibility and my design. The creator gave me a design that was gifted in, in, in the area in which I am to perform. i got to honor my design first. That's my number one reason. Then I have my wife who's depending on me to perform. She's depending on me to be everything she saw in me when she met me. And my children need me to be an example of what's possible so they don't get locked into what everybody else says is only what they can do. So I, that's my why. My why is to show up and first of all, honor my design. I don't believe anybody is designed for mediocrity. I don't believe anybody is, is designed uh, 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 to be average. I think average is a default setting. You just show up and you're average. Show up and do what everybody else is doing, and you're average. Show up to work. Don't get in trouble. Do what your boss tells you to do. Have, you turn, have your assignments turned in on time. You're average. That's what everybody does. And then you can actually screw up and make poor decisions and don't do anything, and you'll be below average. But to be above average, to be better than good, to be great, to be phenomenal, to be exceptional, to execute with excellence is going to call for you doing things that other people won't do. It's going to call for you setting a standard that pushes you beyond the limits, and you've got to be committed to it. It's standing up saying, no, that sounds good, but it's got to sound better. That looks good, but it's got to look better. That comes across right, but it needs to be perfect. I mean, I said this before, you, you should chase perfection with a relentless pursuit. Now, you're never going to catch perfection, but when you're pursuing perfection relentlessly, you will catch excellence. You will experience excellence. When you chase perfection relentlessly, you'll never catch it. But in the process of chasing it, you will catch excellence. You will catch phenomenal. You will catch extraordinary. But you can't do it wallowing around pretending that I can just do what everybody else does and my life is going to be wonderful. That's why your life isn't what you want it to be because you're trying to play it safe. You're trying to play it small. You're trying to be popular. You're trying to be light. And you're not challenging yourself. You're not honoring your design. You're not reaching on the inside and pulling out all that God designed and put inside of you to move and, and, and be an impact in this world. I tell people all the time, 
the first half of my life was about me doing what I want and, 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 and getting caught up in myself and my accomplishments. But the second half of my life, till I breathe my last breath, will be about leaving a legacy, a legacy that speaks of me long after I'm gone, that says, I came, I saw, I conquered, and I touched lives, I changed lives, I worked with people, I gave. That's what it's about. Are you living a life that will speak for you after you're gone? Finally. Finally, when you look at yourself, there, 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 there's this uh, saying that when you get ready to die, your life flashes before you. Uh, I haven't experienced it yet, obviously, so I don't know if it's true. But let, let, let's just say that it is true, that in the moment that you are entering into the final uh, seconds of your transition, your life flashes before you. Would it be worth the time it takes to watch it? Literally, if your life flashed before your eyes right now, would it be worth your time to watch it? If not, you got work to do. You got to put in the work. If your life doesn't, if your life flashed before your eyes right now and you don't, at the end of it, you don't got this huge smile that says, I, I can live with that or I can die with that. You need to put in some work. There's no time for procrastination. You got 86,400 seconds in a day. 86,400 seconds in a day. How you invest in those are gonna determine where you end up. There's no such thing as casual time. No such things as casual moments. Everything has a purpose. Everything has potential. Every second of your day has potential in it. Whether you access it or not is up to you. Got a lot of people just walking past potential every day, just letting seconds roll by, seconds roll by, not investing anything in it, not picking up a book, not making phone calls, not talking to people, not trying to expand yourself. You've got to look inside of yourself, challenge yourself, lift yourself. Don't wait on somebody else to validate you. Don't wait on somebody else to co-sign your vision. Don't wait on somebody else to tell you it's possible. It's written inside of your DNA, spiritually and genetically. You are gifted to do something extraordinary. You don't need anybody's permission to do it. You've got to wake up in your own mind, in your own time, and declare there is no perfect moment for me to start so I'll start now. It's not going to look right to most people, but I'll start now. I challenge it. Start now. Look, I got to get off of here. I still got a whole bunch of stuff to do. Uh, but speaking of books, this is book number 20, uh, Critical Mass. Uh, it's a book. Some of the things I shared with you just now are in this book. Step by step, methodical processes that will break you out some of the most inhibiting behavior that's shutting you down and not allowing you to be everything that you can be and experience life in a certain level that can be fulfilling. Uh, 23 chapters and an entire bonus section for people of faith in the back. So look, get your copy. Uh, you order here, you get it at a discount price, plus you get it signed. Uh, that also, if you want to work with me directly, if you're serious about working with me, there's an email in that email. Find out about the courses, the classes, the programs, the one-on-one -on -one sessions that I offer, public speaking engagements as well. Whatever it is, make a move. I, I mean, first of all, today. Do something today that will advance your life. Don't, not just the routine stuff that you do every day, most of which benefits somebody else. I'm talking about look at yourself right now and say, this is what I'm capable of, and I'm going to start today. I can't get it all done today. I understand that. But I'm going to commit to doing something different because I deserve to live a fulfilled life, and the world needs me to be at my peak. So I'm going to do this today, this one thing today. This day, I'm going to do it. Do that one thing. Invest in yourself. Make a move.
Stop putting it off. Stop procrastinating. Stop talking about the right time, the perfect time. Stop all that. There's no perfect time. There's no right time. The right time is when you make a decision and commit to it and move on it. Execute on the idea. With that being said, man, I'm going to check out here. Like I always say, look, I'm going to live my life on full. Some days are great. Some days are not so great. Some days you get kicked in the gut. But at the end of the day, no matter how bad it is, I wake up and I answer the bell. That's the, that's the promise I gave the creator a long time ago. If you wake me up, I'll answer the bell. I'm not going to look at it and say bad day and shut it down. You're not going to catch me whining in my bed. I almost died in 2016. Almost die. I'm trying to get to the wedding. I'm trying to get to the altar. And two months before my wedding, I'm in ICU. I had a seizure so bad that it dislocated both shoulders, tore nerves in my left arm. I fell and broke my humerus, my upper arm. If you ever done that before, trust me, it's not fun. Then I had the nerve damage. So a person who writes and uses a keyboard to make a living, loses the function of one hand. And the other one, he can't really move because it's been severely, I mean, completely dislocated. And I'm in this agonizing pain. And I've got to look at it and i got to say, you know what, it's pretty bad. But you know what, I'm going to answer the bell. My wife will tell you, first day home from ICU, I'm laying in the bed still with a hospital gown on. Alarm clock goes off at 4 a.m. That's when I, I set my clock to get up. I get up. I can't even dress myself because I can't move my arms. I said, baby, you got to get this shirt on me. And she's like, you need to lay down. No, you got to get this shirt on me. You need to lay. I am not going to lay down. I'm going to answer the bell. If all I can do is sit in front of that computer and scroll that mouse, I'm going to find something to read that's going to make me better. I'm going to find something to watch that's going to inspire me. I'm going to find something that will give me some reason to continue to fight. Because right now, I'm pretty beat up. But I will not lay here and wallow in misery and pity. I answered the bell. Life is not going to lay down for you. But let me tell you something. While it won't lay down for you, it will pay you any price you demand of it. But you got to be committed. You got to be ready to answer the bell. That's my challenge to you. Die on E. Answer the bell. Leave this world knowing you were here. Let them know. I mean, the world needs to know you were here. Not to stroke your ego, but to feel your presence and your impact. If the world isn't feeling your impact, you're not living. That's my challenge to you. I look forward to hearing from some of you. Hit me up, man. Let's, let, let's make some things happen, but you can't sit around and think the world is just going to move because you want it to. You don't get what you want. You get who you are. You get what you've become what you develop into, not what you want. You talk about what you want all day long, but if you don't invest in becoming what you need to be to have it, you'll just be sitting there wishing. Come get it with me. That's what I'm telling you. If you don't want to come get it with me, you better go get it. It ain't going to come to you. You're going to have to go get it. I'm out of here. Thank you guys for your time. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow to do more reading from the book. Uh, I'm enjoying that. I don't know y'all probably not, but I'm enjoying it. Just going back and saying, man, I was in a zone when I wrote that, you know, just looking at it, man, because everything is a blessing. You know, I remember when I was told book number one, that was wow, a while ago, book number one wouldn't get published. Uh, here I am 20 books later and book number one still selling. On Barnes and Noble. So, you know, don't tell me what answering the bell won't do. And that's just one area of my life. And the thing is, there's nothing 
different about me than anybody else except for the fact that I go after stuff most people won't go after and I refuse to quit. When most people get banged up and everybody's saying stay, you ever seen that fight where they're telling the fighter to stay down? I'm that nut that keeps getting up. That's the only difference. With that, I'm out. Peace.